So you think innovation really sits across the pharma company, you wouldn't say it sits within any particular department or unit? Absolutely. Uh, innovation, productive innovation, is the job of everyone in the company. Um, there is no value in developing molecules that die at phase two and phase three. Um, we only get paid, we only get rewarded if a drug hits the market. Patients only see value if everyone does their job really well and gets this molecule to market. That's what everyone's looking to do. Um, and it's the job of the whole company to do that. Discovery, clinical, marketing, regulatory are all really forward-looking uh, uh, departments in the future success of, of any one molecule. And how early in the drug life cycle would you say the concept of innovation, as you've measured it, comes into play? When do companies need to start looking at this? So there's a couple of interesting uh, timings, if you like. One is the desire to go looking for new molecules in certain places. Now that's a discovery activity. It tends to be around disease area strategy, around therapeutic area strategy. That's a key time to reflect the kind of the, the, the huge granular high resolution picture you need of opportunity in the market going forwards. That's a great time to reflect a very high sensitivity to what might be an innovative molecule going forwards. The next time is to be careful, uh, which is around the end of phase one when you've got some clues as to what the product does and before phase three when really you've committed your product to doing one thing and one thing only and one thing well at some point in the future. That space between is really the time when you get to characterize your drug, the, 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 the dose response curves, the populations that benefit, the indicators of likely responders versus non-responders. All of that real opportunity and di to differentiate your molecule comes in that space. Um, so if you get those two things right, if you get the disease area strategy right and you've found a nice place to go looking for answers and then you carefully characterize your molecule when you get the chance of one that works, that's how you really nail the, the idea of innovation. So what about the smaller companies and even the biotechs? Because it's often been quoted that innovation is driven by smaller companies and harder for the bigger players. Do you see signs that they would, the smaller companies would perform better than some of the larger companies according to these metrics? I think if you define productive innovation the way that we have, of course that tends to penalise the smaller companies slightly because they've been regarded as more innovative because they've come up with molecules perhaps that are close to what the market wants but then they need to develop and commercialize them for it to be productive. Would smaller companies do what better on our index? It, it, it's an unknown because a lot of what we're talking about is the ability to take it through the phase twos and the phase threes and then launch it through the regulatory approach. I think the interesting thing around the, uh, the pharma industry at the moment is the biotechs are coming up with interesting molecules. Who are the people that are going to take those interesting molecules to market? Well, it's the companies that know how to develop and commercialize molecules, and that's really what we're talking about here. So that partnership between people that are coming up with interesting looking molecules and companies that can then talk the language and, and walk the walk of putting those molecules onto the market, that's really what our index shows, is that companies are very different in their ability to do that. So in the negotiations and the dialogue with biotechs and universities and anyone else coming up with interesting molecules, they do start to pull apart and tease apart how valuable you are as a large pharma company to those biotechs. Do you have plans to extend the index to the smaller companies and look at how they're performing? Um, if possible, yes. I think we would like to extend the index to maybe the top 20 pharma companies. I suspect it will be a long time before we get down to the top 50, just simply yeah, weight of numbers and, and I think you'd start to lose some of the value of the index if you included everyone in it. Um, we, because of the way that we define productive innovation as being what you launch, it's going to exclude a lot of the generics companies, it's going to exclude a lot of the, um, uh, the smaller biotechs anyway that have one product or two products. We need to be able to average out the company's performance and not have it over reliant on one product that they did very well and, and a couple of other products that they didn't do very well at all. And in your view, how do you think people should or could be using this innovation index? If I put myself in the shoes of a CEO at a large pharma company, I'd have to be very interested in how my company performs year on year in launching innovation. It, it's what I'm for, 
it's what I do day to day. The company only has a future if it launches interesting molecules that have value to the to, to the marketplace. So how would I be using it? I'd be using it to try and understand the culture of innovation within my company and try to understand how we maximise our ability to launch interesting innovative molecules. And I guess another interesting angle here is from the investor. Do you think the Innovation Index can give clues as to where people should be investing? Would, would you invest your money in those companies performing better? Absolutely. It's a, it's a consideration that we've had all of the way through this. And it comes right back to the question that you asked at the beginning, which is, what was our inspiration? And you say, if you gave the same molecule to two different companies, which one would do better with it? So traditionally, investing in pharma has been about trying to understand who's better at discovering molecules or who's better at selling them. What we're saying is the thing that sits between those two things counts for the most, is who can take those interesting molecules and do something interesting with them. Now, as an investor, I'd be very interested in someone that comes first in, the, in our index versus someone that comes 13th, because those two companies are going to perform very differently in the future. If, if anything, this index should be predictive of company success in the future. And that is the basic question investors are asking themselves every single day. Pharma can sometimes be a little bit introspective, and whilst I'm sure it's good for the companies that are scoring lower down the list to look above them and say, what can we change, what can we copy, it's probably also worth looking outside the industry. So, in your view, what other industries do you think pharma should be looking at for ideas around how to innovate? Well, I think, I think the lessons of innovation are broadly consistent, industry for industry. I think if you look at the... Um, financial industry, you look at the IT industry, you look at the ones that are traditionally regarded as more innovative, often they're just ones that have a higher churn rate, a higher new product introduction rate than pharma does. Um, but the lessons of how you understand what a market wants in the future and then develop, more, develop a product that meets those needs and wants, uh, those lessons are broadly consistent. We've looked extensively outside of the pharma industry because uh, as an analogue, as a kind of case study, the timelines are just much shorter. All that you're doing in pharma is extending the timelines out a little bit to allow for discovery and to allow for development and, and marketing. But the principles are exactly the same. Um, so there is no one industry that you would say, don't bother looking there. It's got lessons to teach pharmaceuticals if you just go looking for in the right places.